So that leads us to mini biking ain't easy. <laughs> <laughs> the direction we're going, it isn't. You guys are so cool. <laughs> I feel like I'm 30 years younger. I was gonna have a wrap, but I, <laughs> I'll wait till next Come week. Come on, Jason, get it yeah. in. <laughs> yeah. Play the drums on the table. What's up, everybody? This is another podcast, a mini biking ain't easy podcast. I'm Jason. Here today, I have producer Zane. On the ones, twos, and threes, I have Bernie. What up, what up? And today, we have owner Tim one Yoko. Of, one of Ooh. owners. Co owner. Yep. Thank you for hanging out with us today. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Welcome. (laughs) So we had Dave already on. Mm -hmm. He was a pro. So now we're going to take your point. So take us back to Rockwood Go-Karts and how you started. Like what age did you first get into the go-kart track and just kind of walk me through till you started to own it? Okay. Started down there part-time when I was 15. Ramped it up a little more my senior year of high school, working long weekends. So then once I graduated from high school, started working 60 hours a week, and boom, Dave and I uh, became partners because he was working there part-time. I had hired him. He was in the Air Force at the time. He was getting out, so he was either going to go work at the airport as a fireman or I asked him, because he had skills I didn't have. I had more the mechanical side of it, and he had none at that time, but he was a salesman, a natural salesman, and smart. So I think we've made a good team 34 years later. So we go through the 80s. So about 82, I got married. Next year, we had a daughter. And then 89 hit. That's when Dave and I became partners. So then eventually, we kept growing what is carding distributors. We were selling Manco products at that time, and we were a national distributor for Manco products. So we were selling all their products. We had a four-state area that we, we had. So we were growing that well. Then when the dot-com era came, which... Guess what? It hasn't always been there. (laughs) We started dabbling in that, and I have to give Dave credit on that. He's the one that kind of jumped on that early. We had a guy that we knew that kind of knew what he was doing, and we stumbled through for a little bit and got something up online and went from there. And it's just grown about 15% a year for the last probably 15 or 20 years. So uh, thank you, Lord. So how I see it, that this is a family company, and I would technically be part of the third generation. Correct. You would be the second generation. Correct. Your father is the first generation, but even a step back further, I've always wondered, why did he start a go-kart track? Was he big into go-karts before then? No. Well, go-karts, you know, really didn't take off till 58. My dad and mother were both born and raised in Idaho, and my dad joined the Air Force. All Air Force people trained down in San Antonio. They stationed him out here at Carswell in Fort Worth. So he had four to six kids at that time, depending on that time, because they were having kids every year. Okay. My mother was pregnant for nine straight years, so we had 11. That's like 10 11. to 15% growth every year. That's, that's good, right. too. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, what so we that's say, a good one. There's 11 total? There's, yeah, there's 11 children. Okay. Catholic, so you know. Are, are you the oldest, youngest? No, oh, I'm right in the middle. Okay. You know, the best ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he started working at the go-kart track on a part-time basis. Oh, there was already a go-kart there track. There was already a go-kart track okay. there. And I don't know when that was. I don't believe I ever asked him that, that. But let's say it's 1960. So in 62, when he was due to get out of the service, the track came up for sale. As I understand it, there was a doctor, a lawyer, and a CPA that owned it. And they had a guy from the Air Force, a sergeant in the Air Force, who was running it. He was getting shipped out. And I believe at that time they had a couple lawsuits. So it was it was time to bail. They weren't making any money. So my dad bought it. He paid $12,500 for it. Took over on Memorial Day weekend of 62, which I was born shortly after that. I was June yeah. the 9th. After the Labor Day weekend, which, of course, we know was September, he went in to pay him off. Which in 62, $12,500, you could buy a house and a car. That's, maybe two cars. Wow. Yeah. Because I think their first house was, you know, nine grand. Wow. And I know he bought a 67 station wagon that was $2,800, you know, and it was a pretty nice car. That was a lot of money. Yeah. But I'm sure he worked seven days a week and really put his head down, you know. Okay. 
got it done. So then they had a very successful business because that's when carding really had started. And at that time, they didn't have very good carts. There wasn't really anybody that was manufacturing a true commercial go-kart. So my dad started improving some carts that they had, and he went and bought a plans. And there was a company called White's Welding that was here in Fort Worth, and they were making a decent cart. So he went and bought that from them, and then he proceeded to make that much better into a lot of gussets, heavier material. And for a while, we manufactured commercial go-karts. Oh. And then we got smart and quit doing that. But uh, <laughs> uh, And actually, that was the first company that I bought from him before Dave was the manufacturing company. Is that Clipper Cards? That's, yeah, that was called a Clipper Card. Okay. C's, like the ship, a Clipper. Where they came up with that name, I have no idea. But. So he went all through the 60s at that location, making fabulous money, and in... 74, they lost their lease. The guy wanted to develop the property. So in the spring of 75, we opened up where we still are today. We eventually bought that property, so we're secure there now. We have a go-kart track. We have a miniature golf course. We have, you know, kind of a party area. And yeah. It's a nice place to go. Now, at the original track, Taylor was saying you guys had mini bike rides. We did. So what possessed him to do this, I don't know, because you couldn't get away with it today, but... <laughs> I guess that kind of takes us even to what we do today. You had American mini bikes, mm. uh, which is a lot of stuff we buy today and collect. And when Honda came out with the Z50, the 68 model, it was still a hardtail. But that just, you know, three-speed transmission, it was just Japanese engineering, really. It's kind of the beginning and the end for the American manufacturers. And you can kind of see that as you know their history, you know the bikes, you see where they went from rigid bikes to a little bit of suspension to full-blown suspension because they're trying to keep up with the Japanese. But really by the middle of the 70s, the American mini bike manufacturing market was dead. Okay. Just the Japanese, they were just building such better product. And I'm sure at better pricing. He decided he wanted to open up a mini bike track that was adjacent to the go-kart track. It was really kind of nice. It, you went down a straightaway and you climbed a hill and you kind of came back and around. And so they'd have 12 mini bikes out there. And that was really had taken our interest at that time. And I'm not sure when that opened. It had to have been like, like 70 or something like that. So I'd have been around eight. We hung out up there all the time because that was a shiny penny, you know, plus yeah. it's motorcycles. <laughs> so I uh, tried to steal as many rides as we could. My dad was not a give anybody anything type of guy. Oh. You needed to pay for your ride type of thing. Really? Yeah, Even there, you there, was, kid? there was no free rides. <laughs> you know, all the way around. Yeah. We did spend a lot of time at the Fort Worth Zoo at yeah. that time because we just walked across the bridge and it was free to get into the zoo at that time. Oh. So in the middle of the summer when it was hot, we knew which houses were air conditioned, so we'd just go in there and sit. And it was just it was really pretty good. And then my brother Aaron, who's a year older than mine, who works here, when the aluminum cans came out, and Coors was the first one to do that, we started collecting aluminum cans. And, man, we walked a million miles picking up aluminum cans. Oh. Yeah, we'd take them home, we'd smash them, we'd throw them in bags at the back <laughs> fence. And when we had a station wagon load, my mother would take us down and sell them at the mm -hmm. Coors Recycling Place. Anyway, so they started the mini bike business, and it went until they lost the lease down there, and then he never opened it up, back up. And now and that kind of thing wouldn't fly at all. I would do it <laughs> i mean it's I, I don't can't imagine you could find insurance for it but Just, back then were they getting hurt well sure and bye have a good ride there were a couple lawsuits as i oh, recall okay. now, remember i'm a kid but i remember a couple lawsuits out of it but i mean you'd have people that would take off and be trying to kick each other off of them i mean <laughs> <laughs> Anything that you could imagine that a drunk, high yes. person would do, they were doing. They it. did. They, it. Okay. okay. <laughs> there was a lot of issues. I mean, because you got to pull them off. Yeah. So how do you stop somebody that always wants to stop? You jump on their back. <laughs> I don't know what they did. You get on another mini bike and you kick them off. Kick them off. <laughs> kick them over the hill and let them go into the fence. I don't know, but I remember there were some times that fight their way out of it. Literally. Really. Yeah, they had some groups that showed up that were just wanting trouble. Oh, just some surly types. And I'm not sure that they didn't start some of that, but after I remember this one big incident at the minibike track, they started hiring off-duty forward police officers to be there on the weekends, and gotcha. that really changed things. Mm. And we still use off-duty officers today, and I wouldn't trade for them. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money anymore, but I wouldn't trade for it for the security of the guy. And I think the families, you know, like that. Yeah. That look. So, still rocking and rolling. So, here recently, so as of eight years ago, there was the mini golf that's been put in. Here recently, we just added a party room. Yep, just finished it up. Do you have any more big surprises for us or anything that what's next? You know what? No, I don't. And I, I have to give any credit that I do, I have to give it to the Lord because it's just like that golf course. 
Dave and I were ready to just abandon the track and really focus on Go Power Sports and Karting Distributors. And then one stupid day, I decided I was going to put in a miniature golf course. And really, it's been a fabulous blessing. Yeah. We hired a company out of New Jersey that I met at one of the, at the IAPA show, uh, amusement park show. Okay. It really was a great experience. They, they did a good job. No problems with the course. Such an easy business to run. That's really been a good thing. And the party room was just, we weren't using that back room anymore because that's where we used to store parts when we were down there. So we just converted it into mm. a party room put an AC system in it. Literally finished. I mean, Jose was asking me this morning, he's a manager down there, and asking me this morning, are we ready to go? I said, yeah, start advertising it. And nobody can believe it's free. Yeah. <laughs> How many times do you have to say free for somebody to understand free? What's that commercial that's on television? They keep saying free, free, free. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, no free rides. That's yeah. what people are used to. They probably remember your dad being down there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, you're coming down and you're buying golf and you're buying go-kart yeah. rides, so it isn't free. We're making money off of you. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't... It's, yeah. It's, it's just... Gives you a more pleasant experience, especially in the summer when it's, you know, July through September in Texas is just miserable. So so this brand new room, you thinking 40 guests can fit in 40 there? 40 can get in there easy. We actually have tables and chairs set up right now for 40 people. That's an easy fit. Okay. And if someone wanted to rent out this room, they just email or call up to Rockwood Go-Karts? Yeah, it's a kind of a first serve, you know, first come, first serve. Jose will take care of them and get her done. Nice. So. Do you remember that room being that pleasant when all of you were stuffed in there with parts, doing calls, and all that other stuff? stuff in there well it was the storage room so i mean it was where you went and gathered your parts and of course we used a lot of trailers at that time too we had it on the low i mean we, we didn't have any overhead yeah we, uh, we stored a lot of parts and trailers and whatnot we made it happen you go down there and you look at that and you think good lord how did we all fit in here and, <laughs> and we filled orders on that bench yeah. you know, now we've got sometimes 600 orders a day going out and it's just the Lord's been so good to us. Did you start working on bikes? Because you said you're more mechanically minded. Did you start working on bikes down at the track or did you have bikes at home? No, I had bikes at home. There was a police auction that went once a month and my dad always went to it. And so I started going with him. So when a bike would come in there that needed repairing, I would buy the bike, when I say bike, motorcycle. Then I would take it home, I would fix it. And then at that time, the only source to sell it, since there's no Craigslist or anything, was the Four Star Telegram. So you just run an ad and the Star and they called your house phone because there's no <laughs> cell phones and always had them sold before the next auction and I had my little book that I kept my notes in as far as how much money I had in it and everything else and so that's how I started and, and really was just kind of like welding I taught myself how to weld out of necessity I taught myself how to be a mechanic out of necessity when again you got to give the credit to the Lord because he gives his gifts. And you pass it on to Taylor, too. You know, I wouldn't have thought that because as a kid, he was all about video games and basketball. was a very good basketball player and a good baseball player. And he went to the Marines. And when he was getting out of the Marines, we were talking on the phone. I said, what are you going to do? Because I, because he was in air traffic in the Marines. And I thought he would be an air traffic controller because that's a great job. He said, well, I'm going to come work for you. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was about the time we were moving out of there and moving up to this current location that we're at now. He went in there and managed the go-kart track, and Jose was there. As things grew here, we needed him up here. We threw Jose in there, who at the time really probably wasn't ready, but had the aptitude for it and had a desire for it. And he learned on the job, and I wouldn't trade for him. He's grown into the position, Absolutely. definitely. And we have a philosophy, even with people here, that when we hire someone, we want them, if they're going to leave us, whatever down there, or whatever the case is, we want them to be better when they leave, whether that's better as a person, better as a worker, whatever, you know hopefully a Christian, but we want them to be better. That truly is the heart, and, and Jose understands that, and he gets it. And we get a lot of high school kids down there, so we really get an opportunity to make them better and let them understand what it takes to put in a good day's work. And that's a hard job. I know I worked down there 12-hour days. When you were done in a 12-hour day, your feet, shins were just absolutely killing you. It's a young man's job. I couldn't do it anymore, that's for sure. <laughs> I would want to do it. I, oh, I don't think I could do it, not with my broken leg and everything else that I've gone through. It. But you still, uh, you still get on bikes though and stuff oh i love riding bikes yeah how I, often do you get to ride on mini bikes nowadays not as often as i'd like we did buy some property out an hour and a half west of us that's the ranch that we're calling the when we do the gps we do the gps 180 ranch so that's 195 acres so there's always bikes out there we could jump on and ride but it seems like when i get out there there's something to do on a tractor or something like that so right. as long as it has suspension i don't mind riding i don't want to ride hard tails <laughs> anymore it's too hard on my back i mean you read that you rode the mb 200 up and down those colorado mountains like it was nothing yeah yeah i was gonna say you killed it <laughs> like the, you see the experience when oh, yeah. you're going up those, those well hours. i've been riding and i didn't put that in there 
but there were opportunities to ride those Honda 50s. Yeah. And if you can ride a hardtail Honda 50, you can ride anything. Because, I mean, you're bouncing all over the place. And with 8-inch wheels, small wheels, it's, you know, kind of tricky. So anything with larger wheels and suspension is a dream. Well, that's what I learned on. And my first motorcycle or mini bike was a 73 Honda 50 that was full suspension. It was the first year of the suspension bike. My dad had put a 70 engine on it. A lot of people don't know that, but you can take, a, at that time, a CT70 or even an SL70 engine, and you could put them on a 50. They'd fit right in it. There's no modifications other than manifold. So that was my first bike. And at where we lived, you could just take a left out of the driveway and go down in this field. Really had a great childhood. We could hunt down there for rabbits or whatever. But then we could ride bikes all over it as well. Motorcycles. So that's, I would have to say, when did I ride my first motorcycle? Probably eight or nine years old. So I still want to talk about these older mini bikes, but first we're going to take a break. And we'll be right back after these messages. Whoa! Hey, Jason. Everything good? You want us to come back, man? Or... How? I'm trying to get these people to figure out how good of a deal this Rascal Light is. Well, you, you tell them it's a super cost-effective kit. Plus, it's a complete mini bike for under 500. Yeah, da, 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 da. I want these people to feel this deal. A deal. A great deal. Hey, maybe we should go get some fresh air. Yeah, go get some fresh air. Okay. Any ideas yet? So, what do we think? So we are back. So let's talk about the nostalgic mini bikes that you do have. I'm curious, do you know how many roughly you have? No, I really don't because I have them at several places. Now, some of them are, was picked up extremely rough and I haven't touched them, but probably close to 150, I would think. There are several of them at the go-kart track and some of the trailers down there. Cut probably. that, cut that. <laughs> 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 they have locks on them and yeah. security. So. Yeah. And then I have some at my house and I have some... Actually, in Aaron's, my brother Aaron's place. Do you have a top five or a top one that you want to single out as in your most prized possession? Not really. I mean, I just don't look at stuff like that like that anymore. I still have my, actually, I don't. I already gave it to Taylor, that 73 motorcycle or mini bike. That oh, I have. really? Yeah, he has that at his house. Which color is that? It's maroon. Okay, yes. Very oh. beautiful. But any of the uh, the Hornet stuff, okay. K&S Hornet that were made, as I understand it, they were kind of manufactured in Waco, but they were assembled in Fort Worth. At least that's what I had somebody tell me. So any of the Hornet stuff, because I just think they're really a good bike, and they just handle excellent. They've got great steering geometry on the front end, so they, they really handle like a motorcycle. Would the goal be to own as many Hornets as you can get your hands on, or just one, and that's kind of... dip? If we... Well, I think I have three or four of the super Hornets, and then probably three or four of the little more basic, and there's a couple of just the basic five-inch hardtail. But I have two of the ones that are a two-seater, and they're really the most ridiculous thing. They just added a seat on back of the other seat. I don't understand. I've never ridden it. I want to put an engine on it, right, but there's no way 
way the front tire stays on the ground if you have somebody yeah. on the back. Especially if your lady's hard. a little on the large <laughs> side. That just, this is not going to work. So those, those have to be rare. You don't see them very often, but I have two of them, yeah. which would be pretty easy to get going. One of them's original blue. Yeah. What did you think of uh, Evan's bike that he just fixed up? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, we helped him oh, yeah, get yeah. it going and everything. And I think I donated a couple of forks or something to it, maybe a spring or two that mm-hmm. he didn't have. It's, it's a gorgeous bike. Is there well, anything not in the collection you are seeking? Where I'm going now is rare stuff. Like I have a uh, Hiawatha doodle bug that's over there in the showroom that's completely redone. And I bought it that way from Guy to Tennessee. But those were built, and I might have my dates wrong, but somewhere around 45 to 49, 46 to 49, something like that. Oh, wow. They were built in Iowa or something. But they have a reunion in that town where they were built. And I might be able to remember that if I don't think about it. But uh, every year, there was a guy, I don't know if you know that guy that shows up from California yeah. that wants to live in Texas. Fieri looking guy. Yeah, No exactly. offense. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not yeah. watching. He's, he's yeah. super guy. Yeah, he's super nice. He has yeah. too much real estate in California to get out but he wants out yeah. but anyway he went to that this last year him and his dad and he said there were about 50 bikes in it wow so yeah I was surprised at that number because normally that's kind of I would think that's kind of fallen the way of old big old bikes that were made that were real popular not the Rokon no dang it chopper looking back. it's getting old anyway <laughs> yeah. most of the people that own those you know are dead or can't ride them anymore kind of figure that's kind of how it goes but I just like it's got the sweet Weeping handlebars on what you'd expect from a 40s model bike. And I have one of those that's a roller that my dad had. And it was over in the our garage when I was a kid. I think when they moved the track in 74, he took that from the track and moved it to his garage. So it sat there. And then after he passed away in his estate, I bought it out of his estate. What I'm thinking I'm going to do with it now, instead of trying to redo it all original, is to just make it, leave it like it is, put an engine on it and just make it. A nice, fun ride to ride around the swap meets and whatnot. How cool would it be if you made that homage back to that reunion, though? You know, it's on the bucket list. I'd like to do that. Yeah, how so, great uh, would that be? Fun, fun. <laughs> yeah. It's in the summer in, in Iowa, so it'd have to be hot <laughs> and humid. But uh, yeah. if they'd have it in Colorado, I'd be all in. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, your co-owner, Dave, your dad, was talking about Legends of Carding. He said to talk to you about it. So um, to bring it up, like your experience, what, who you met up with, I guess something that was another bucket list thing that you had. Right. Oh, cut, cut, oh cut. okay, <laughs> I got it, I got it. Sorry. <laughs> Remember, I'm 60 and stupid. But <clears throat> I was, I would have wanted to do a series that we would put on YouTube, and it would be interviewing guys who had manufacturing companies. And we did, through uh, Greg at Redbeard's Garage, we did deal with Bill Hatlam, who was the owner of Manco Products. I think he's done one video off of that, and I think there's another one, but I don't know if he's lost interest in it or whatever. In a vault somewhere. The plan was to try and get to these other guys before they died, because a lot of these guys were, you know, they've got to be in their 80s. If they're, some of them have probably already passed on, but maybe their kids would have some kind of wisdom into it. Recollection or something. Like or something that. Yeah, but if that's what he was talking about, that's so we started, but we didn't, didn't pick up any traction with it. Got started on something about? else. So. Who yeah. else would you want to talk to on there? There's anybody else that you would like to interview. I know guys that would love to travel and film that for you. And their names would be starts, starts with a B. Zerny and Bain. The guy that owned Brister, uh, Chuck Brister. I know he's still around. Mm. The guy from Simplex. I know they're not around. In uh, Alabama was Carter Brothers, and then in Georgia was uh, Ken Alexander. I would think Ken's probably passed on, but he did have a daughter and stuff that worked in the company that would probably have a lot and would probably love to tell her dad story could you see us doing this with legends of mini bikes because we've been wondering about doing a mini bike documentary and how it all started i think that'd take a lot of homework to try and find out who the i don't know who those people are because when i came on the scene you know the mini bike business was already dying and i was interested in the hondas yeah. and still have an interest in honda the small stuff the 50s and the trail 70s and stuff like that so i don't know how you would find that stuff i, don't know. I know we had a few leads for the father and son who had worked on the hornets um, yeah and I believe the guy, the original guy, is still around on that. I think he lives in Dallas. I was trying to track down as much as I could. We can talk more about it after the show. Okay. But I started doing a bit of research on it on the side. So finding like these older bikes, we then have an event coming up, paid swap meet paid at Texas Motor Speedway. Yep. 
I'm curious, when did you first start going to pay? Definitely when they when they went over to Texas Motor Speedway. It used to be down uh, close to Granbury. They called it the Paint Swap Me because there was a museum down there that was the Paint Museum. So that's where the name comes from. They what had, is, is it paid a person? You know what? I don't know okay. that. I don't know the answer that's to that. It's a noun. But they had old aircraft and military type stuff. As I recall, at any time it rained, it was just a mud pit. Once you moved out to Texas Motor Speedway, that's all on asphalt. So it could rain the day of and five minutes after it quits raining, you're ready to start walking again. The Speedway is definitely the way to go. And Shoot, I don't know how long it's been at the Speedway. I, yeah, I've only been the last five years. Yeah, so at least 10, I don't know, but I bet it's longer than that. Truly going to paint every single year was definitely after they moved to the Speedway. And your heart is just because you like just seeing what's out there, you like wheeling and dealing, just... Yeah, I like to see what's out there. You know, it helps you expand your mindset on maybe something that you want to do is just like you turn the light on back here that little bike there i mean it kind of leans back towards old school yeah, yeah. real simple to build and so is your number one heart to go there and find mini bikes well it's always nice to find mini bikes that's where evan got that hornet mm -hmm. was last year and it was strictly a frame you know there was no wheels and tires on it and yeah. yeah and we gave him the go power wheels to go on it that's what we're doing go power wheels what's so, the best thing you found at pete i just say some up some mini bikes i guess okay i found some old go-karts out there too I think some of the ones hanging on the wall in the showroom over there came from. Oh, okay. The problem is I don't ever seem to be able to get there early enough. Oh, I see. Some of these guys like uh, Harley, like Harley Wrangell. I mean, he this guy's got a he's like a dog, you know. He's <laughs> got a nose for finding that stuff, and so you just put him in charge of it, and he'll come back with it. So we have Harley coming in next week. Yeah, we'll, so tell, you know. we'll tell him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but he has time to walk too. Where yeah. we go out there, we're still working. This is going to probably air after it, but for people who haven't gone to pay like myself, what can I expect there? Well, they say it's the largest swap meeting in the Southwest. Okay. So cars and going, you know, Model T to go-karts, mini bikes. Sometimes you get the ladies there that come with their husbands and they're putting lady stuff out there. Gotcha. Uh, but Lamps for the most part, it's, it's a car swap meet at heart. I think it's put on by a Model T club or something. I think that's who benefits from it. And there's a car corral where you can go and where people have cars for sale. Okay. But it's, it's just a fun... I enjoy, especially how we do it now, where we'll have... Uh, King will be out there and he'll be cooking every day and we'll give free meals to people and whatnot and just getting together and that's the best part for me and walking it the whole thing is hard on my hip and my leg and I, I guess the fun part's after five when we can all jump on bikes and just kind of go doodle around and you can really oh, yeah. pass by booths real quickly at that mm -hmm. point and so, right. so is it like a little kind of a meet up and you guys just do a circuit around? Or? Well, it started now. I mean, how many bikes took off last year? 20 or 30 bikes? <laughs> At least, and we're just rumbling down. Yeah, right, right. they all have open <laughs> headers on them, and there was some old guy that came by and was... <laughs> was upset, you know, that we were all riding it. Yeah. It's perfectly legal. They, well, you can ride cool, your yeah. stuff after five. What, yeah. Would it be better if half went that way and half went that way? <laughs> and I thought about that. Maybe we should split do that this year just to be nice, I guess. No, Sometimes. spread it out so every 20 feet there's yeah. a mini bike. So it just <laughs> never With ends. an open header coming by with because they can be loud. Yeah, yeah. So for me, I enjoy paid just not so much of the buying aspect, but I think that you're really building a mini bike community, which is I nice. think so. I agree with that. You can put a, a name to the face. You can come say hi. You can see what we have, but we're not persuading you to buy something. We're trying to feed you and get you just to come hang out, bring out your yeah. bike and hang out, and let's just talk shop for a couple of days. Right. So I think that's big that you guys are pushing that because, yeah, there's only so much you can do. There's only so much walking you can do, but when you add different layers to it, and now we have the mini bike ride that, that you're talking about, after five every single day yep. that's a good community thing because we don't get too many places to go out and just ride together right. so doing that and even after that we go go-kart racing in that lot right after that so it's a real weekend long yeah. event and some of the guys in the past we've gone down to our go-kart track and yeah. they, john and isaac and yeah and uh, the guys take them down there and they enjoy those cards so yeah that whole week is a come hang out open house yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. So it's a great way to kick it, off the season. It right? really is. It's a fun time, and that's what I—that's really what I'm interested in now. Is the grind of sitting behind my desk is definitely the shine has worn off of that. Yeah, yeah. Getting out and meeting people and putting a face, you know, with a name or whatever. A lot of people just want to come up and meet you. And I like meeting new people. Yeah, didn't used to, but I like it now. Right. <laughs> then after that, yeah. we have the pool start picnic. Pool start picnic. That's a Taylor and a Jason, Bernie, Evan. I was Evan, kind of pulling that, and Zane. 
Yeah. Um, and I think it's going to be pretty dang successful, especially for a first year. Where we got 10 guys coming from California. Yeah. The street racer guys out yeah, of California. Got, yeah. that, what's the name of them, Bernie? So Day Day and... Uh, what is, but what do they call Bolts, that? What uh, do they call that group? Fast, fast Lane. Is that what it is? Okay. And I know someone yesterday... What's the name by. of the city? Oh, Compton. That, yeah, the Compton. Compton yes, yeah. that's what... Yeah, that's we how, had a, that's how. a guy here yesterday was like, are you guys going to have enough room? Like, he's <laughs> thinking, because we, we're given a 10... 10 bike, bike limit. T- yeah. 10 bike limit, so... Well, that concrete lot at the go-kart track is 40,000 square feet, which is just 43,000 is an acre. So, you know, it gives you quite a bit of room. And, and we're going to have some uh, off-duty Fort Worth police officers down there, and they'll be telling people, don't pull up here, go, and you can park on the grass anywhere you, you mm. want. And so we'll keep everybody off there. So we'll have all of that space available. And I'm definitely taking a, not that I don't want to be there, but I'm definitely not doing any of the work on it. I've done nothing on this thing. And yeah. You guys have done a good job of promoting it. So, Are you going to, uh, would you be down to help us judge? Oh, I don't care. I'll do whatever you need me to do. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, Whatever yeah. you need. Well, also, especially because you have such a wealth of knowledge and you've been around mini bikes for, I mean, Dead basically. A thousand years. <laughs> I, roughly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then to marry our two events, we are planning on doing a paid pick, which, oh, okay. New so, news. Yeah. So for the pool start picnic, we'll have six guest judges, okay. six on, score on six different categories. Okay. Then we're going to have our people's choice where spectators come in, get a ticket, put it in the, oh, in yeah. the bucket that they want. That, yeah. GPS pick where the GPS <coughs> family crew, we pick out our favorite bike out of the whole lot. And then the Pate pick, which is where you build up, you buy something from Pate. Oh, I remember you talking about this. Yeah. You take a photo of how it all started. You bring it back three weeks later, a pool start picnic, and you may be able to win a prize. Okay. That's a fast turnaround. Three weeks to make a show you ready. You got to get busy, especially yeah. if you're going to have it powder coated, because a lot of times oh. powder coaters are at least a week. So, because so. you got to put it together first if you're smart, and M- then tear sure it, it and then tear it apart. Yeah, make sure it works. <laughs> That's when we're going to give away our last bike of the yes. ten for the you know anniversary. Oh but, yeah. Like you said, this is going to air after that probably, or maybe not this, but picnic. We'll start. Yeah. That might be our best bike. So it's a slam rascal with 10 inch aluminum wheels on it chrome frame which all of them have chrome frame yeah and then a copper Ooh, yeah it's nice uh, i think it's gonna tear it up Taylor, i'm excited for it taylor's done a good he's done some different instead of using our straight line gussets like we normally do he's done some kind of honeycomb looking yeah they look really good yeah it looks good that's gone to chrome right now those guys also are going to do the uh, copper i think he's picking it up today because he said he dropped it off at four yesterday that's oh. the drag bike oh the drag bike yeah. okay so, and yes he did pick it up okay. so number 10 raffle bike we are <clears throat> all proceeds go to teen life all proceeds go to teen life can you tell us how we came into hand-to-hand marriage with with teen life how that all started teen life which is not part of any type of national team whatever the different team names are and I'm not discounting those. This teen life is a Fort Worth start. The guy who was the high school youth director at the church I go to started it. And so he ran it for three or four years and maybe he came to us initially. I don't I know but, that I've seen them at church at the men's conference with the yeah. booth and I don't know if they've been just a part of that church for But yeah Chris Roby took over has done a lot of good things with it. Anyway, so we started supporting them and this since we had our sixtieth anniversary last year I, I went to Taylor and said, Hey I want to do this which is really taking Taking a lot of our time. Ten bike anniversary build. All proceeds would go to Teen Life. I think we gave them about sixty thousand dollars last year. A lot of help to those kids. Absolutely. It's a wonderful program that they go to high schools and through work with the counselor at the high school, the counselor picks out people that they think would benefit from a group discussion. You'd get in a circle type discussion. I think it's a six week program. I think what kids learn the first day, I have to believe really helps them, is that they're not the only ones. You know, when you get in that spot, you think the world's the worst. You know, it's just happening to you, and that's just not the case. There's a lot of bad out there. So it's a good deal, you know, and we get some good testimonies from, might have been the worst of the worst, you know, but through a lot of love, committed to Christ as, you know, as their Savior. Started singing at the church in the youth group, and uh, so quite a turnaround. So that's what we're after. If you want to ask me what really drives me, would be all the charities that we do. Of course, we're giving all the glory to God on that because he makes everything happen, you know. Uh, so it really, we give a lot of money away, or at least we think it's a lot of money. But uh, yeah. teen life is, is a big one. And I don't brag about that number. I'm Like I said, I'm giving the glory to God because he's the one that makes everything happen. But we also do some other ones where I started doing the mercy ships. If you ever look at those, that's really a great organization, all volunteer doctors and nurses. and But they have these ships and they go into different ports and the poorest of the poor, you know, like in the continent of Africa and stuff and, and just all kinds of issues too 
maneuvers and everything else, and they operate them on the ship, stay there for a little bit, take care of them, and then, and then okay. we're doing the Operation Smile, which is another deal where they primarily do cleft palate and cleft lip. We donate to that as well. It's another great organization that's real lean on the top, and then the money all goes to because nice. yeah, it's okay. all volunteer dentists and stuff like that that do it. So that's what we're looking for. Then another local one is the Northside Northside High. Legacy Foundation. Yeah, that was on my heart. I think that's where we really kind of started really giving. They're right up from the go kart track, so okay, we need to help our community because that's who helps us. So. We started a $10,000 scholarship for a student at Northside, and I've really grown to really love that. And the best part is just reading the applications from the students. And my goodness, it just, it really gives you hope that we do have hope in this country. Because, you know, you can look at it and a lot of people are saying, oh, we're going to the dogs. There's a lot of good people out there, a lot of good kids that through some really difficult situations, not necessarily bad, just to be honest, they're first generation kids. Their parents came here maybe illegally, we'll we'll say that, and so they've struggled with money, and these kids are just, woof. I don't know how many of them have we asked and said, do you ever sleep? Because Jason's part of that. Yeah, they they give me hope because they're at public school. They have the odds against them because when you read these essays, you losing family members or they're doing everything on their own or they have a full-time job on top of going to school and these with guys, a big load at school y- yes because they're taking ap classes ap classes yeah and just seeing these kids <laughs> they always revitalize me every single oh, year yeah. they're they're a blessing and, but you know what i was just talking to somebody about that you know the guys from grind hard plumbing they're not grind hard from uh, bill break repeat they're as genuine in person as they are they are just good kids and smart Documentary coming soon. We just uploaded that. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Perfect. Those are good guys. Yeah. And we're meeting these good guys. And what I see from the Compton guys, you know, when you and Taylor went out there and, and videoed that, I, you know, it's, there's a lot of hope, a lot of good kids out there. I think on the ground level, most people are fundamentally okay. <laughs> I agree with that. So I think that, they, you know, most people are just people. We're trying to get through this life. We're trying to feed our family, you know, eventually feed our families and trying to get through. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back after these messages. They can't see you. Just tell us who we're looking for. Okay. That's it. Number four. Are you sure? Yes. No. Number two. So, number two? I don't know. They, they all look so dope. Our 10-inch modular steel wheels come in four classic colors that'll make your bike stand out. Choosing just one is gonna be the hardest part. And for a limited time, they're only $49.95 each. Really? I'll take all of them. Good call. Available at Go Power Sports and www.gopowersports.com. Okay, I think that's it, right? Got it. And we're back. (laughs) What was the first product that you designed? Because Dave did say that you've come up with a bunch of the kits that we do, like the 40 series kits. And what was the first one that you started on? You should have gave me these questions before now. (laughs) But I mean, that is a big one. It was definitely something that was needed because buying torque converter stuff for big block engines is terribly expensive, especially if you were getting them through Comet, who was really the only people. Unfortunately, and kind of a saving grace, is that Comet had went out of business, mm. and it gave some guys to send some an in to send some stuff to China. All Chinese stuff is not bad, especially if you work with the vendor and you improve the springs and you know all the different stuff that goes wrong on them. So I knew what Manco had done on their 40 series, so that kind of gave me the knowledge of knowing where to go with it. But that's been a really successful successful. Yeah. Taylor's the one that did the little rascal. And we have the drag bike yeah. that we've been playing around with. Drag bike, the suspension kits. There's a, uh, yeah, well, yeah, there's suspension kits, but we have uh, what I keep calling the super bike coming, which was a full suspension bike. So it's not going to be a cheap bike, yeah. but it's also going to be a premium bike. We're making a fuel tank, which the uh, mold has gone to the plastics guys, so those will be coming out pretty soon. So it'll have a remote fuel tank, a nice seat. It'll be full suspension. It'll have 10-inch aluminum wheels on it, but it'll be an expensive bike. It okay. has to be with all that stuff on it. So it's coming. that'll be coming down the pipeline soon? Yes, probably fourth quarter. 
Okay. It sounds it like they're working on it now. They're working on it right now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's with COVID, really, and we're really just kind of coming out of that on the supply side because China really locked down there. As much as people would rather buy everything domestic, let me put it that way. And that's the nice thing about this fuel tank. It's 100% domestic. And it's oh, nice. as cheap as we could have got it done in Taiwan. But you just can't buy some stuff in the United States. It's just not available. Yeah. So, you know, you have to go yeah. overseas. Like I say, I'd rather buy everything domestically, but that's just not realistic. Not the world we live in right now. Yeah. And let's be honest, the consumer drives a lot of that because what's the first thing the consumer looks for? Price. Price. So the yeah. consumer drives a lot of that. So we've got the full suspension bike. We have a new gas tank, which looks pretty sweet. And those should be ready by May or so, right? Probably around the 1st of June, yeah, because yeah. the mold is done. And then from there, it has to go to Houston for fluorination and then up here. Fluorination is a sealing process. Gotcha, for a gotcha. plastic tank. And then the 10-inch billet wheels. Those are on order. Just waiting uh, on those. Again, that was a bear because we started on those, I think, before COVID. I mean, it's been process i don't want to brag on china at all but they're coming around they're finally and it's not their fault the yeah. government's telling them they got to shut down or whatever. yeah which if you think that's the right thing to do for your citizens to keep them from dying you yeah. know <laughs> you know you do what you got to do then we got the mega motor 212 rear swing arm rear swing arm it's through testing what we normally do now we don't build that much in house as far as the finished product it's all built here tested here and then once it's finalized then we send it out for pricing we have a nice manufacturer here in what we call the metroplex Dallas Fort Worth area where we're fortunate that they do the rascal they're doing more and more stuff for us and just really a, a good job on it so that swing arm for the Mega Motor 212 is over there and they'll be working on pricing and awesome building the tooling and everything for it to yeah. be able to make it I can't wait to market like I'm calling it the Megalodon which is going to be like our Mega Motor 212 complete kit now with the battery box with the swing arm yep I mean, that's got to be sixteen, seventeen hundred dollar bike right there. Well, I would think so. Yeah. But it's going to be a beefy bike, and it can take a beating. My uh, son-in-law was riding it out at the ranch last weekend, and he said this is the smoothest bike he ever rode. Oliver just got off of it last week. He said, "I believe that I like this better than the Trailmaster." Yeah. He said the Trailmaster sits up high; you can get aggressive with it, but it's like cruising around, and this being the smoothest ride, like this is definitely it. Yeah, because we take those to Colorado with us, but we've never had a rear suspension. Oh yeah. So next year, next year, this year. <laughs> We're already in this year. If we go up there, we'll we'll take one oh, yeah. or two of them with us. Okay, so uh, how do you feel about going 100 miles an hour on a mini bike? I don't feel like doing that at all. Because it, it's so it, small? No, because I, it hurts when you land. <laughs> <laughs> if I was 30 years younger, yeah, just like your age, be all in it. Okay. I'd jump on it and race up down Denton Highway like Taylor does sometimes, <laughs> and even you sometimes. <laughs> Would it you, hurts too much would yeah. you do it, to bounce off the ground. Yeah. <laughs> would you do it on a quarter mile drag strip? Oh, it would have to be legal. So yeah. yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't just take it down the road right out yeah. by the shop. <laughs> well, I wonder how many feet or how long it would take for us to hit that and then to have enough braking power to or well, get, braking distance. Getting to 70 is really fairly easy. It's oh. getting over that. Well, I mean, you got to have the right cam and everything else and the gear ratio because you got to gear it high but if you gear it too high then it doesn't allow your torque converter or whatever to work if you're doing a torque converter on it because yeah. you don't have enough torque because you're trying to just go fast yeah so it's a balancing act to get to 100 miles an hour and i don't know if that's something we really should be pursuing so. said <laughs> jason like winks at the camera so what frame like if you were to build a bike what would be the best frame to try to hit 100 miles an hour 8105 frame that we've modified the dog out of and then stretch it with the rear swing arm or keep it I stock? Think, I think just the way you, Taylor has that one built down there. I mean, okay. Because it's got the 10 inch wheels on it, which makes it better, you know, better to steer. So taller tires. Yeah, because the taller tire, the more forgiving bad steering geometry is. Going slow and holding something up is one thing. It's another thing when you start hitting 100 miles an hour because, I mean, you got are the tires balanced? Because if you get into a high-speed wobble at that kind of speed, you're in trouble. Yeah. You know how to tuck and roll. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's been practicing. So you think in a 10-2 jack shaft sprocket to like, I think our smallest is like a 42-tooth rear? Probably have to. Or do you need like a custom one? Well, we can do anything. Yeah. 
test and we have enough suppliers, we can do anything. I don't know. I'm leaving. First of all, I don't really want you guys even <laughs> doing it. So maybe I maybe this is an eye opener for me to say, Stop. we ain't doing that. <laughs> uh, we need the viewers. <laughs> unless we've got some single guy that's dumb enough to do it because you have a family. We'll keep an eye out for him for and sure. And then, uh, you know, Taylor, Taylor has a family. I mean, you guys have yeah. families to yeah. raise. You need to... You have well, to be if working. anyone is crazy enough to come out and try it, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boy, that ought to get you some feedback. <laughs> I do want to touch on uh, GPS 180. Are you letting Taylor race in that race? So you first you have to let the people know why this has become an issue. Because <laughs> okay, he goes so hard <laughs> that he usually breaks one of his collarbones, right? Well, he was at that Lime 100 yeah. last year. Yeah. Was sliding, was winning, sliding in the corner and high-sided. Broke a collarbone and a couple ribs, as it turns out. I don't think they even knew about the ribs, but I have a really good chiropractor, and I had a siding nerve problem that he fixed. And so sent Taylor over there eventually to do that, and he took a bunch of x-rays over and said, well, you got cracked ribs, <laughs> so we need to fix that because if you have an internal organ that's rubbing on those cracked yeah. ribs, it can rupture. Yeah. yeah. Through his guidance and everything, he's got him in top shape. But you know, we, we got to keep going back to you got families to feed. You know, you need to be responsible in that. Yeah, because right after that, we went to Tampa and he hurt his ribs again and his ankle. Oh, yeah. On the go kart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then so. he did it again <laughs> at some other event. So. I think it's after that he started going to the chiropractor, mm. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that leads us to <clears throat> mini biking ain't easy. <laughs> <laughs> the direction we're going, it isn't. Yeah. So. All right. Well, that was all the questions I had for you. I appreciate you coming out and hanging out with us for, a lot of fun. for an hour. Thank you. We'll definitely have you back on again. And you guys remember to like, subscribe, and as always, ride on. Yes, Perfect. Excellent work. Yeah. Killing Thank it. You.